This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get nerdy, get get techy. It's the Awesome Cast 299. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron, live from an Airbnb in uh, San Diego, California. Uh, so uh, ready to go here with me, as always, from Studio C. I don't know what to call this. Can I call it Studio SD? I guess or Studio um, BNB. Studio B and B, there you go. Uh, with me is John Chichilla holding down the fort back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the hometown of this podcast. How you doing, Chilla? Pretty good. I feel like we're spanning multiple time zones. <laughs> we, we definitely are. We <laughs> definitely are. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see if I can get somebody from every time zone, including where I'm at uh, later on the show for Wrestling Mayhem show when we do that too. Uh, but there's there's sunlight, Chilla. There's sunlight, <laughs> and there will continue to be sunlight until I'm done with the podcasting here today. That's that's awesome. And then I'm actually going to go hang out with some people. Uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, we're mobile. Uh, we're trying out a lot of stuff. Um, I got my blue snowball over here uh, that I brought with me so we could do the podcasting. We'd have some half-decent audio. Uh, we have the chat room going. I'm using a Duet display, so I have a second monitor to throw up the chats and the websites and everything. I'm, I have my, my light from my camera sitting on top of this TV here. Uh, I've worked this out. Um, uh, what what else am I using here? Uh, you, we're just just keep, keeping it mobile. Oh, did I mention Zencaster? Um, which is something we talked about months ago on the show, and we're going to try to capture better audio than if we were just doing Hangout, and we, we're completely not missing podcasting, and it's really awesome that we're able to do this. So. You should, your just, your tagline should be have studio will travel basically. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, and I got a place with a, a, a great, a great, uh, internet connection, um, a great Airbnb, and B uh, and, we're, we're definitely going to talk about that bit in our awesome thing of the week. Um, but let's get to the, um, get to the uh, uh, business first. Uh, like I said, you can check out the site, awesomecast.net. If you haven't before, subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Music, YouTube, Facebook, uh, live here, live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6.30 p.m. Eastern. As, as usual, we're working out the tech around then, but you can join us for the conversation as our good friends, Trey Gar, Alex Cars, and, uh, and Hot Wheels were here during uh, during this live uh, deal. And uh, we're here uh, also on our friend Rivers Edge PGH. Thursdays at 8 a.m. after Funny Money um, over there, and uh, and and check out all this stuff. And also, big thanks to our Patreon supporters, our friends. This will see business development up there in Cranberry, PA, as well as the Mike Fedor Show. Mike Fedor on Twitter. Go follow him. Check out what he's doing. Check out what all of them are doing. Um, great, great friends of the show that have been supporting it for a great while now, and we really, really do appreciate it. Uh, so let's get into it with our awesome thing of the week. I almost, I really want to go to with yours because I'm really excited about yours more than the stuff that I've been <laughs> I'm, doing. I'm totally on. I'm totally cool with that. You got the gadget. Like let's let's let's, let's 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 see your toy. Uh, <laughs> Chilla, go ahead. What what did you get this past week? There it is. So, oh, and oh, I, I actually got a uh, Samsung uh, Gear 360. So this is their their 360, 360 degree camera. Um, packaging was pretty nice. I don't actually have it with me, so I can't show it. But they do actually have Sorg. You'd be happy. Um, it does have. Uh, it is mountable through the typical tripod mount. Um, it comes with its own uh, smaller tripod. Um, that you can kind of throw on a table. Um, the, I was a little bit thrown off taking it out of the packaging, and, and I'm going to give them some feedback on this too. Um, when you pull it out, the first thing I notice is this button on the top, and I think you have it up there um, on the screen right now for, for those viewers at home. Um, there's a red button for OK, and, and the, the device can kind of work in a standalone mode from, from what I'm gathering, keeping in mind I only have I've had this for like four hours. Um, there's a menu button on the side with Bluetooth pairing options, and then the power buttons on the lower on the lower side. It's a sphere, so it's kind of, you can't really say. And and there's there's cameras on both sides, so you can't really say on the left or on the right. right. Um, it is chargeable. It seems like it's going to get 
uh, quite a few hours off of a single charge. Um, I actually had a 32 gig um, micro SD card, so I threw that in there. There is some localized space, um, but you turn it on, it makes a cute little beep. Um, the lights glow red. I don't know if you can really make that out right there. There's a, there's a red light. Um, and then it kind of gives you, I have 2,372 pictures remaining and then three quarters of battery. Um, it pairs over Bluetooth, works over Bluetooth. It's also NFC compatible. Um, the device, like I said, uh, it comes with a nice little little tripod so you can kind of set it on a table. Um, where, where the device really shines, I will say, is it's in its native Google um, support. So the Photos app, pretty much anything on any Android device, um, will definitely get you started and, and, and running um, with with using it. And I, I took a picture in one of what we call our living rooms. So I'm going to bring that up into the Hangout right now um, for for anyone that can see uh, at home. You can see here it's, it's actually, we call it a living room area. It has a, a bench with uh, six chairs. Uh, there's a TV. Um, and, and this is at, at Big Ass Bank where you work, yeah, right? Yeah, this is at the, the Big Ass Bank. Yeah. Um, you can see over here we got some some chairs. Um, there's a seating area over here, and there's conference rooms. There's steps to the upstairs. Um, and you can see lovely outside Pittsburgh. Um, but the nice thing about this was I merely took this picture, uh, saved it to my device, and then let Google Photos upload it. <laughs> and now I'm showing it to you over Google Photos via a desktop browser. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, can you clarify with me, like, what's the what's the connection with the phone? Does this thing kind of like do you have to be connected with the phone for this thing to operate, or is it just it it works best with the Samsung phone? I would say it works best with the Samsung phone. Mm -hmm. um, it will. It does seem to want to be able to operate via the record button on top, and I'm guessing one of these buttons will switch modes on the side. Yeah, time lapse, video loop, settings, video, photo, and then the top button. Um, I wanted to make sure I didn't get in any of these pictures. If, if you've noticed, um, I'm not in the pictures at all. Um, Which is probably to, the hardest thing about 360 video. Yeah. So what I actually figured out was, is with the Bluetooth connection, I got a good 30 feet with ease. And like I couldn't even stand up on, on this area, right? So I actually ducked back into a hall actually you can barely see make make me out i'm like where's Waldo there a, back there is there a security camera in this room of you just being weird and hiding behind i don't think there stuff? is i don't think there is a security camera there's there's a there's um a monitor right here to see if anyone's in the room but i don't i'm not aware of any security cameras um if not, I'm someone may have come and asked what the heck are you doing mm -hmm. um but the, the ease of use is what really was amazing you know i you, you actually have to load the, you have to have the Samsung app store. So it's not on the public app store. You download the application. It walks you through a kind of a four-step process from turning it on to pairing it. And then you can quickly, um, quickly get going with pictures, photos, or photos, time-lapse, video, etc. cetera. Um, I haven't really experimented outside of kind of some basic photos. I know you were saying maybe next maybe next week with me in studio, um, we can do par a portion of the I'll record a portion of the show, um, and we can kind of put 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 that out there. There's also um if, if anyone I'm starting to look for, and I'll talk about it probably later in the show. Um, I'm looking for ways to publish this content. Uh, kind of plug-in free, working from any device uh, type technology, as well as being able to mm -hmm. highlight um, things in the room, right? So if I wanted to call out, here's where the remotes are, here's what, here's how this works. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I would want that to work. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Um, and, and what was the price range for this thing? Uh, I want to say the price starts at 400 but i could be wrong it hasn't been released yet in the u.s so i've i've heard rumblings of 400 i've heard rumblings of of uh 500 but i do yeah. know from what i know is that it launched for two nine i think it launched for 299 in the uk which is mm -hmm. in euros which would probably put you at roughly the 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 400 price point here so that's interesting because it's completely it's completely um 
comparable to the Rico Theta that we talked about before, the one that I'm eyeing to experiment with here. I'm hoping very, very soon. Um, so, but now, now I, I think we talked about this a little before. Is do I have to have a Samsung phone? From what I'm gathering to date, yes. Or, okay. and I haven't tried it on a non-Samsung device. So the Samsung devices obviously all come with the Galaxy App Store. Right. Um, I don't, it's quite possible their app is in the Play Store or you can you can load up the but Samsung either way, you Store. Need, you need their software that comes through their store in order to interact yes. with the thing. And there's not really another. And you said there's like a connection to a PC you could do uh, when you were talking about this before. Correct. So um, that's it's still that's it's yeah it's very kind of locked in but um, that's really like accessible I think mm-hmm. for the most part at least for kind of early adopter geeky people like us um, for for options of people that want to get into the space I mean it's not like it's anything that sneeze at but it's pretty comparable to getting a, a GoPro in the long run I'd say it's comparable to the GoPro the, the, the if you got the GoPro with the six six sided cube. <laughs> Yeah, take. not terribly <laughs> comparable to that. Yeah, I know. But then, but this also it's a resolution thing too, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm really curious to see what that resolution is. And 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 I, I should, we should probably pull up at some point the specs between the two. Um, maybe we'll have a 360 off at some point uh, between the two cameras. I'm hoping so. Um, that's really awesome. So so the GoPro, they're claiming that the it's two 15 megapixel sensors. So it combined, it's a 25.9 megapixel photo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, videos the, at 3840 by 1920. Which dual mode. doesn't sound like that's a real, like, it has to be a really, really crazy resolution in order for it to look like HD video, basically, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, again, we talked about this before. You're basically taking a giant, giant video and you're watching this little section right here. And that's where it gets kind of weird. But, We'll see. It's getting there. You know what I mean? I mean, th- mm-hmm. this is that's accessible, and and that paired with the three hundred and sixty stuff, it's it's amazing. And and so you're you said you're looking for like the best delivery. Yeah. So there's um, and, well, I, and I'll bring it up. I can I can actually here. Let me share my screen. So there there's there's this. I I need something where I can share share the content that I create, but I want it to be a little more agnostic from the perspective of people being able to view it. I want it to be viewable via a browser. Okay. Preferable and have it work on mobile devices as well as desktop, laptop, whatever cross browser capability. I don't want to pigeonhole myself into a single browser. It um, feels like YouTube and Facebook are pretty much your selections. Then. So that's my selections. But if I wanted to keep something that I could keep internally for work only, oh. that's another consideration I have to take. Yes. So, yes. Th- so it's so the the picture that I showed of a, of a conference room. If, if if you watch PBS and you watch Return to Downtown, they do a full detour or full tour of the building. There's plenty right. of tours online. Um, nothing proprietary in that picture. Um, Mm -hmm. There is stuff that I do want to leverage that would be proprietary information. Um, So with about 45 minutes on my T ride and, and, and whatnot on the way home, I found this panelum P A N N E L L U M. Um, So it's an HTML five CSS three JavaScript WebGL uh, library. That's open source um, and it's free. Uh, the cool thing about it is, so if you see my screen, I can click and drag around the room. Um, I can zoom in. Um, I can take these. It kind of shows me a compass. Um, I can zoom in, zoom out. And then I can actually, there's information sections that you can hover over. Um, or if you're on a mobile device, you can tap. And you can get information, and this is where I would want it. I would want it to be information about specific rooms. Um, I was playing with this briefly on my iPhone on the way home via the Safari browser, so I know it kind of works. And then it looks like you can even link the files together. So as you go from room to room, um, this software will allow you to actually link one image to the next. So you can hop, like I could do multiple rooms and you could click to get to the next room. 
Nice. Um, by the way, a side note here, I've completely been in that room. Um, that's oh, really? actually, and so has LB and the Carlins uh, because we, that's where, uh, the Papuga Bunjo wedding, uh, was held, was in that room. Like that's the reception room right there. What is uh, this room? It's a, it's a library room. It's where uh, it, uh, Baltimore. Oh, okay. At the P well, it says, it said somewhere in there, it's the Peabody library. Um, I think it's part of, uh, whatever major university is around there, perhaps. It's in a very kind of cultural district down there. Uh, so, but no, it is, we walked into that room and it was just gorgeous. And if you're on audio, it is um, about, I don't know, was that about six stories? It's six, of, it's six floors. Six floors of library. It looks like, and to our Doctor Who fans, it reminds me of the library episode when you first meet the Doctor's wife. Um, and uh, it, like, it just this crazy, crazy, vertical library and it's just absolutely gorgeous when you go in there um i had no idea what we were getting into <laughs> and if you actually like i said if you go to that p-a-n-n-e-l-l-u-m dot o-r-g um it loads up right on their front front page that's their mm-hmm. that's their demo so this that's is a free nice. open source library that you can use um it's document they have documentation download etc so and pretty feels, cool and that's awesome that's awesome so again, the QuickTime VR that we uh, used to do back in school about 15 years ago uh, now has been realized in to these kinds of formats that people are actually using now. You know, like I, I can't. I remember people. I remember doing them, but I don't remember anybody actually using QuickTime VR in in a lot of cases. And this is very very accessible to people. And you had to do a lot of stuff to get those things to work. And it was just stills and and it was all of this stitched together. Whereas this is somebody you know with a camera like you have and taking one picture right. You just got to hide and take the one picture. You know, right. we were t- taking cameras and spinning them frame <laughs> by frame, you know, and, and, uh, and that, that's really cool that that works out. So awesome. Awesome. So I, I can't wait to see what we uh, work out with that. We, you know, I, both of us have a, a, a crazy interest in 360 video and imagery. Uh, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun stuff to show you guys in the coming months here. So, um, all right. From that, as, you, as I mentioned, I'm in San Diego. I'm at an Airbnb. Uh, that's tremendous. This is, this is this is like the new way I'm going to travel. I think um, when it, for for unbusiness trips or, or, or something like that. Um, I uh, uh, I decided. Well, I'm, I'm out here on business again. Our friends with uh, Baja SAE. We have uh, uh, another another event going on north of uh, Los Angeles. So I was like, well, okay, you know, maybe I can, you know, if they let me, I can, you know, hop out a few days early and 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 check some stuff out. I'm visiting our friend Veronica that that moved out here several years ago from Pittsburgh, and uh, I was like, well, you know, but I can't drop, you know, I'm not gonna stay at the Hyatt or anything like that, you know, I'm, I don't want to break the bank. Um, so I made a decision that um, I was doing some stuff in LA, and I'm down here in San Diego for a couple of days. I uh, took took the Amtrak down here, and uh, and I'll be go going back up there and doing doing work north of town up there. Um, and I'm living on Airbnb and Lyft. So was, was, is the big kind of angle on this. Um, first, let's, let's talk about Lyft. Um, and I've done Uber before. And I decided on Lyft because, one, I've never used it before. And, two, I'm kind of uh, miffed. Not miffed. I'm just kind of, like, annoyed by the, the tipping mechanism and that controversy that's been going on there like i don't know if you're familiar with what's going on with the, with with uber where um apparently they weren't there's no function to tip them and they weren't allowed to tell you that they can receive tips like supposedly they were being i don't know rewarded through the star system or something like that uh so whereas lyft it's all right there in the app you can tip them um it's taken care of right mm-hmm so uh, I went with that, and it's been a really awesome experience, actually. <laughs> so, is, did you look at both apps to see, like, are there a fair amount of people doing both services, or? Well, let's put it this way: when I was in LA, I felt like every time, like when I, so like, there's a place at at LAX that's four car services now. It was a it was a pain in the butt to find because it was a level above me, and there's construction, so I had to walk like like way down here to find an escalator to go way back over here and retrace my steps basically. (laughs) Um, And then even when I got there, like Ubers are everywhere. I mean, I think Uber is definitely the, the Kleenex of the service, right? That's the one everybody's going for. Um, Because 
there was like four Uber cars waiting for, for rides there. Um, and it seemed like every time I had just sent for a lift, an Uber car pulled up or drove by or something, right? Like it's, it's, they're lousy with Ubers, but not that that was a problem because even every time I've ordered a lift, um, except for a one time actually today and, but, but I'll get to that. Um, especially in LA, somebody was in there, there within five minutes. And everyone's been super friendly and you get, you know, you don't use these services and not be a social person, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think, I think that's the first thing. So especially with the Airbnb side of things like you, it's not a hotel. It's not that kind of thing. Um, if you're looking for, I want to talk to different people. I want to, I'm, I want to save a couple bucks. You know, it all kind of works together, uh, with the lift, you know, I'm making sure to talk to everybody that, that, that I come across here. And you know, the, the, the second lift that we took, there was this, uh, this, this younger girl and she was, uh, turns out she's from Estonia. And we're like, oh, what are you doing in L.A.? And, and everybody, this is their, everybody's side gig. Like, everybody's side gig. Um, and she was like a, a, a production assistant on, like, uh, like uh, Masters of Sex and, and another Showtime show or something like that. Uh, that I know Alex is going to remember what it was, um, but I hadn't heard of it before. Last Ship, I think she said. Oh, Last um, Ship, so is, she, I think that's like TBS or something. They're, is it TBS? Yeah. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool concept. But but she's working on that stuff. The guy that just uh, took gave me the lift back here because I went out to uh, had lunch with with my friend and I came back here to do the podcast. Uh, he's a graphic designer, you know, and he was telling me about how he went and did this stuff and 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 now he's doing a t shirt business. And I actually gave him a card for because he seems like he's, he's our kind of people chiller. And so hopefully he's listening to this. Um, but it's been awesome. I, I can't even tell you how many I've taken. Um, and, and of course, you know, I had a code that was giving you like up to $10 off the first five rides. So like, like most of the LA trips were pretty much taken care of. Uh, but even now, like every time I go somewhere, it's like seven bucks tops and that's when I'm tipping people. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. And just, and anywhere I'm going is like, maybe like, you know, 10 minutes max, you know, from, from the spots I'm bouncing around. The, the longest one was one from the airport to where I was staying in Boyle Heights. And that was about. 35 bucks when I threw a tip in there. And, and again, I had like 10 bucks off of that with a code, you know, um, hold on. I forgot to tip this guy. I just give everybody five stars. Cause I like everybody. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to pull this up to see like exactly how many of these things I've used. Um, but I'm trying to figure out what this thing about viruses in the chat room, but anyways, um, but no, it's been, it's been super awesome. And like, I'm actually considering like, you know, times when, cause you know, we're down to one car, uh, at our place. Um, and, and, and sometimes, you know, I have to, the decision to like, take, take miss, take my wife into work. And so I can have the car to do whatever, man, I think like Lyft is the solution when I was like, ah, Oh, you want to have coffee over here, and I'm I'm not anywhere. I have a car or anything like that. Instead, of like you know, and I can't take a train downtown for whatever reason, which mm-hmm. is actually difficult now, as you know, in our area. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's like just take a lift down. It's the same price as if I park downtown, you know. So that's perfect uh, then. If if if, if it's com- if it's approaching that same price point, I mean, why wouldn't you? It is. It absolutely is. If, if you know, if you're basically paying five bucks to to get more or less anywhere you would need to you know it's not like i mean it's not like i'm going to go from like where we're at in the south hills and be like you know hey you know let's go out to monroeville you know what i mean you could you absolutely could and that's probably gonna be like maybe a 15 or 20 dollar ride you know but if you're like (laughs) and honestly um this opens you up if you like to go like i never like to go drinking for Mm -hmm. instance because i don't want to deal with all the stuff around it you know that that's one reason i don't go to bars or anything like that and or or kind of maybe just go have soda if we're hanging out for whatever reason you know um that's why i love when we do stuff downtown because i don't worry because i can hop on a train home mm-hmm. you know uh but now that opens that up it's it's, it's 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 awesome for that kind of stuff um something that was different when i got here i didn't notice it when i was in la so i don't know if it was something that was activated up there but at least here in san diego there's something called lift line and it'll actually give you a couple bucks cheaper of a ride and it will, the minimum is usually like $4 and there's like, there's fees and whatever. Uh, but the lift line, I've had two instances here where what it tries to do is smartly, wisely, however you want to say it, um, pick up more than one person. 
okay. that happen to be going more or less the same way. First guy picked me up like last night when I was heading out of here, uh, took me around a block, and uh, and most of them seem like very new to it. Like the people that have had this and had to pick up a second person, like they're like, yeah, I guess this is how it works, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, one was like like a week and like a couple weeks into using Lyft or being a Lyft driver in general, and the other one like it was just like, yeah, usually I don't get anybody on this, you know. Uh, and we like went around and 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 and. He's like, yeah, you have like a minute and a half and we just drive off, you know, basically like there's a timer when you show mm-hmm. up, you say you, you hit the thing that says you showed up and there's like, there's like a, a, a countdown of like a minute and a half. The guy didn't show up and we just continued to my destination. Um, this last one this morning when I was heading out, uh, she picks me up and there was always already somebody in the car and actually like you saw a little thing you could flip over and, and it was like, okay, some guy named Brian is getting in the car b- before me. So I know who the guy is, you know, um, drops me off. And apparently the other person was going downtown and, and that was it, you know? And again, it was, it, and it was like a dollar or two cheaper than what it normally would have been. Uh, and it was really cool. And, and just the concept of like, I decided to walk through the park and I'm like, I'm just going to walk until I'm tired of walking and then I'll call a lift. That's perfect. <laughs> uh, 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 Sunday we were, I, I walked to a Starbucks to do some work and I was like, Ugh, that was a long walk. I'm not going to go, ba- I'm not going to go back, take a lift back. We walked out and did something else. And it was like, you know, ended up walking like 40 minutes away. I'm just like, okay, I'll take a lift back. I don't, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not walking all the way back and I'm going to kill myself with it. You know, uh, it's, it's awesome. You can just go explore and just get, a, get a car back <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and not have to deal with, um, public transportation and how does that system work and how do I pay for it? No. Well, it's definitely nice. To, I, I couldn't imagine being a first time visitor to Pittsburgh where it's the land of one way streets and you can't get there from here. So it'd be even just having someone that knows, knows the, the layout and knows where everything is to then be able to get oh, you there. Yeah. I think is, is key. And pick their brains, pick their brains. The guy from LAX was, I told him about where I was staying. He was from up in that way. Cause I'm going to stay in the Valencia, Santa Clarita area. And, uh, and I was telling him, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be here, and I'm going to get on a plane, like, Monday morning. And I said, like, this time, he's like, oh, you should leave at, like, 6 in the morning. I was like, well, that's good to know. Because, you know, mm-hmm. traffic in L.A. is is historically, you know, bad and notoriously bad. And and, and and they're not joking, man. Saturday afternoon was still, like, nuts. Um, but uh, even, I don't even know if he's allowed to do this, but he, like, gave me a cell phone number. He's like, he's like, he's like yeah, I go in, I go in that in this way, and... Uh, and if you have any trouble with your car or anything like that, give me a call and I'll give you a ride in. Because I, because obviously he's a guy that like hangs out around LAX to take, pick people up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so like, like that was interesting, and I got a lot of kind of tips of stuff to watch out for and uh, stuff from the neighborhoods. So one person was like, "Get yourself downtown. There's good stuff down there." And I was in, and, and and we did that, and we kind of wandered around Saturday night downtown, and it was a little weird, you know. I was like, I don't want to eat an oyster bar, but okay, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel weird coming all this way and just ending up at a uh, Cadova, but, but, but sure, you know, um, uh, you know, just needed to grab a bite, but, um, but no, it's been a really, really, really cool experience as far as that goes. Um, Airbnb, uh, it's so I've had two very different experiences, both, both more or less positive. Uh, like I said, I was staying in Boyle Heights, uh, because we were seeing, um, there, there was a, a bit of a TV taping that we, we got to attend. Um, and that's all I can tell you about that. But uh, so I wanted to get a place close by and, and a little cheaper and everything. Our friend Alex in the chat room from out here, um, I got to meet up with him. First time meeting him in person. And we've done work together. And he's been part of the Rusty Mayhem Show uh, podcast for a good while. And uh, uh, the first place was, uh, was, was listed as like a 1920s style hotel. And uh, you got a, uh, what, what did they call it? Uh, it, was a, it was a studio apartment. It was, it was a straight up studio apartment. I actually have a picture here I can pull up of uh, Alex and me uh, hanging out here. Um, and it was like, it looks like they just had this spare apartment room thing in this building. And they threw a bunch of Ikea furniture in it. <laughs> and there's Alex for for scale uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you you have a little bit of kitchenette and there was like a microwave microwave and a fridge no internet no tv i want to note in the background there there's a picture of the eiffel tower and i'm in like a very east la spanish neighborhood and like here's the eiffel tower picture up here and there was something fancy from 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 paris on the on the other wall too you know and there's like a little closet there's a there was a um um <laughs> It, like even like to the point where like there was a lamp behind him on the nightstand and um it 
and, and I looked at it, I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to turn this on. And I looked, and I was like, it doesn't turn on. And it looked like it hadn't even been unbundled from from the, when it was unpacked and plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, and I'm not complaining. It's just like, it's kind of those funny little quirky, like, what what's happening here? You know, I never met any, I never met anybody. Alex showed up first and he got the key and they're just like, yeah, leave the key on the table and you're in, walk out and you're checked out, you know, and that was it. You're good to go, you know? Um, And then here, obviously I'm in a very different place that has internet and is awesome. And, and there's, there's, there's mom letters over there. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, I did see those in the, you can see them in the mirror behind you, (laughs) but it's awesome. It's, um, um, it's an apartment. It's, 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 there's this complex with a courtyard and they got laundry over here. And, um, and, and, and you, you, you got a, you get a message the day of basically and says, Hey, this is a key code to get in. You come in and, and your room's this one. Um, and to the point where like, so I'm sitting here for a while and there's nobody here. There's nobody here. And I get a knock on the door. I'm like, do I answer? <laughs> <laughs> and there's these two go- girls at the door and I'm, and they're like, they're asking for, you know, the name. And I work his name as like the person, like as a contact. And I'm like, she's not here, you know, and I'm, I'm not even dawn on me. Right. Um, Cause I'm like, I don't, are they, are they friends? Are they selling something? Are they Jehovah's witnesses? What's going on? <laughs> you know? Um, and, and they come back like, I don't know, 20 minutes later or something. So they're like, Hey, is this an Airbnb? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they were having trouble with their messaging, I guess. And so they didn't get like the entire layout in the code and everything like that. They just mm-hmm. had like a check in time. And, and, and um, I, I, you know, I, I don't think they were look either. They didn't connect something in the app or something like that. Like something didn't, something didn't gel. As far as as far as the setup, but um, but it's sorted out and everything. So and and I met the I met the the, the host this morning. I had I had breakfast with her son. Uh, <laughs> so are you, know. you in a, in an offshoot room of the house, or how does that work? No, it's a it's an apartment. There's like three bedrooms, and and it's one of those kind of living in living room kitchen is one room kind of things. Like it's a it's a nice apartment, and um, it's just it's just an extra bedroom. Cool. So, and and that's it. And there's, there's two girls staying next door. I don't know if they checked out this morning or whatnot. I like, they were they're, um, I think they were college girls and that that um, check out San Diego. They're from Arizona and and uh, uh, you know they're out of school and just just checking stuff out before they have to do you know grown up things. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so and uh, yeah, it, it's really cool. And again, you get to talk to everybody and and you know, see what's going on. And, and, and I have done a bed and breakfast before. So I knew, I knew what like that intended vibe is, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, so, so, you know, I was kind of open to, to trying it out. And, and even like one of the, one of my Lyft drivers was talking about, he did one where it was kind of like, it sounded like it was kind of like this situation where it was like just a spare bedroom in a, in a, you know, in an apartment or something. Right. And, uh, uh he's like yeah then uh the, the daughter got in a screaming match with the with the mother because they went <laughs> friends over or something like that you know and it was really awkward because you never know it is it's gonna be a mixed bag you know mm-hmm. you are coming into somebody's home uh but uh but generally like like this like the stuff here is like set up for somebody to walk in and there's, Hey, have coffee and Keurig, help yourself to breakfast. And they have all kinds of cereal and stuff in there and, 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 and you're good to go. You know, um, I walked in and the first thing I saw on the wall was like this captain America comic book cover kind of <laughs> picture. And I'm like, and I'm like, I think I'm in good company here. <laughs> um, but no, it's really cool. I definitely recommend it. Um, you know, kind of, kind of make sure you read through the listings certainly you know uh to make sure you get like the creature comforts you're expecting like if you're a person that needs wi-fi if you're a tech head that listens to this or, or something like that or if you see something you know and you're like oh, oh it was the other, there's a lot of variety too so I'm, i was looking at when we're in la la i was looking at uh, other places and one of them was like bunk beds <laughs> like a room okay. with bunk beds and it was like 30 bucks a night and uh, you basically just stay in a bunk bed you know and that's it you know, I have, I'm bringing bags and a computer and everything to do this stuff in my work later in the week. And I'm like, I, I can't really do that. And, and that's just for me and not for me and the friend and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the host here was telling me about, um, she stayed in one that was basically a tent in a sleeping bag in a room. And that was it. Like it was a, 
you know, it's an experience thing, you mm-hmm. know, but like you're going to go camping and you're in the city or whatever. Right. Um, and, and I think she might say that was like San Francisco or something. Um, but, um, but that, like that weird stuff or, or, or something down by the beach and, you know, ever want to stay at a house just like this or something. Right. Um, like I, I recommend like, just go to like that and just go to a plug in a city. Like I'm actually really interested to go plug in like what's around Pittsburgh, you know, just, just kind of curious, like, what kind of places are people running out around there? You know, especially probably, like, over in East Liberty or South Side or, or, or North Side or something like that, you know? Like, you know, where it's getting hipstery and techy and all that kind of stuff that attracts this sort of thing. I want to see what's in Beachview. I want to see people doing this there. I know, you know, one of the plans coming through is they're going to build a, a youth hostel, basically. Um, and one of the things in there is, like, the bunk bedroom, like I was looking at in L.A., in the art district. So... But uh, really cool. I mean, it works. It works. Like, and even I had people sending me like their relatives that live out here, just in case. Like, yeah, just in case you find out your Airbnb is like a crack den or something. You know, <laughs> you know, you have a contact, so have a backup plan. You know, just in case. Um, I mean, I mean, it's always possible because you, you never know who's on the other end, and and maybe they're not as organized or something like that, right? So, like, read reviews. You know, I, that, that, that's my big recommendation. But in both places, were, you know, a, basically what I expected, and and really really cool experiences. So, yeah, very very cool. So my co awesome things of the week that I've been living on the last few days. <laughs> the scary point was this morning. I don't know if you saw my tweets. But uh, my phone stopped working. I, I did see that, and then I saw that you had to restore. I had to do a full restore, and I'm like, if this doesn't work, I can't take a lift. I'm stuck here. <laughs> Which is now, now tomorrow I'm going to rent a car, so because I, since I'm going to be because I'm going to be like out in the middle of nowhere, so I need I need to rent a car. I can't take a lift uh, an hour out of town, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like because we're basically going to the desert to film Baja cars. Um, so, so I'm like, oh no, what do I do? Like, I, I like, thankfully I have a, a backup computer. If I didn't have a computer, I'd be screwed because I had to do the restore thing, plug it in iTunes and do it that way. Um, basically I went to open a lift app to see, just because I was about to leave like early on, I was going to go to a coffee shop to do my work and it did that spring back thing when the app just doesn't work. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, okay, I'll restart. And usually it's, it, it starts working again. Right. Um, and it didn't, it would Apple logo and then, and then shut off basically. Uh, yeah. So that was really, really scary. I found where the Apple store is though. It was pretty far away. I don't know if I could get there. On, I don't know if I could get there on the bus. <laughs> and, and you couldn't call a lift to get you there. I couldn't call. Well, I couldn't because I, I also because I, I had the spare five S. Oh, just okay. To take video and stuff. Like I want to try to do like kind of time lapses with it or something. I think I might do that a little bit um, on this weekend uh, for the client. Um, so I'm like, well, and I threw a lift on it. I'm like, well, I can call the lift while I'm on Wi-Fi here, and then I can go to the Starbucks and call another lift to get back. <laughs> and just I kind of have to you know dance around Wi-Fi you know what I mean like you don't need so, it when you're on the lift like so you was just your, need... so was it just the lift app that was broken initially it just like opened up and it didn't work and I didn't I mean it was just like I got up picked up so my phone if you and... if you ever do run into that and I've I, I've never run into that exact scenario but there's been a couple cases where I actually I could get Wi-Fi t- sharing to work. So I actually shared my Wi-Fi connection to a working iPad, and then used the wi the the phone just as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So if your if your phone was working to the point where you could get into settings and turn on Wi-Fi sharing mm-hmm. over your 4G LTE connection, you can then share the Wi-Fi off the working phone to your 5s or an ipad but i else. didn't think it was as big an issue as it turned into though i, I was like oh this is the way we fix this and, and mm-hmm. the apps will start working again or you know or uh, of course you know a lot of times you can delete the app that re-download it you know and it'll, you know continue working i've been doing that too um so that that was the kind of the situation i was in so um but no, it was a lot of fun and I, i'm really curious about uh if anybody out there if uh Tell us the story a few months back of B&B Rennery that used it for a drug-fueled sex orgy. Yeah, I'm sure there's some of those out there, too. 
Um, there's an Airbnb in London that's a closet inside a home, the real Harry Potter experience. I think I've heard of that one. Uh, BNP, yeah, BNP stood for bed and breakfast. Um, like I said, I didn't get that from the B, uh, the Boyle Heights place. That was less bread and breakfast. But I, well, that's the general idea, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's the concept. Because I, if you've ever been to a bed and breakfast, like, it's a home, too, right? A little more, like, and I stayed at one of those up in Erie. Um, <laughs> I'm just catching up with the uh, chat room here. Sorry, we're not entirely... It's like a mini version of my studio. I still have multiple screens going on, but... Um, well, with that, hey, we need, we do need to give a shout out. Not that we were able to get Slice out here in San Diego. We should have had it just sent to your house. I had some over the weekend. There you so, go. That works. That works. A little chicken um, pesto pie, a little slaughterhouse five. Well, when we're bread. home, oh, you're making me hung so hungry. <laughs> so there's a place out here called Lucha Libro. It's a taco place that's themed like like pro wrestling, and they like announce your orders. But man, we need to get them as a sponsor. But in the for the other show. But in the meantime, our friends that support the show when I'm actually home uh, and in studio, Slice on Broadway, SliceOnBroadway.com are good friends along the tracks that are coming back in. There's actually tracks they put back in there in that construction up in Beachview. Uh, good stuff. Great ingredients. Good people. They're probably wondering where the heck I am this week uh, because we're not, we didn't call like we usually do. Uh, but go check them out. They're in Beachview, like I said, right along the tracks. Out, of course, also on Main Street in Carnegie, PA, and their new location at PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Supporting, oh, oh, I'm getting audio. You guys can't hear that. You can't nope. hear that. Um, but uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza now residing and PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, go check them out. Um, a great crew, great food, and um, tell them that the awesome cast sent you. SliceOnBroadway.com and PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I, I, I just went to go switch like I was at home on the studio. That's so weird. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I am looking for feedback since we are doing something a little different this week. Um, since we're doing something a little different this week, uh, and Jill is chatting with me, and I didn't realize it. Um, okay, um, but uh, uh, yeah, we're using Zencaster, like I said. We're using Google Hangout to do this remote kind of thing. Let us know what you think of the quality. Uh, it's not going to be. We don't have nice mics. Well, at least I don't on my end. Uh, and and of course, you know, I'm in in a, in a big room, so I'm sure there's a little bit of echoey to it. Uh, so, uh, but we are still able to do the show, and I think that's really cool. And I think that's really big testament to where technology is. You know what I mean? I don't need the duct tape studio necessarily. Uh, we can still definitely get a conversation and, and have some fun with this. So, um, so from there, uh, we got a couple quick things to talk about here. And, uh, and then of course, if you're joining us live, we are going to do the wrestling mayhem show. And, uh, it sounds like everybody is everybody lose me for a second. Am I back, Chilla? You're you're back and you're back full quality. You kind yeah. of you faded out a bit audio wise, and then when you came back <laughs> from 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 the slice video, your video was degraded, and then now it's back full HD. You're good well, to go. good thing we're doing the other thing with the audio, so that 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 should be okay. So again, let me know if you guys have any problems when you guys listen to this later on uh, in the post. But uh, anyways, uh, what do we have here? Um, so, uh, well, Chilla, what what stories uh, kind of so, caught your attention? Well, the one that week? caught my eye because I was actually going to copy and paste it in. Um, what do you think about Google Spaces? I haven't gotten to dig into it too deeply. Uh, have you? So I, I briefly perused it today, and it looks like it's kind of like a Google Plus group, but meant for a smaller audience. And I'm wondering if it's to bridge the gap for someone like us, right? We want to po post a bunch of links in a centralized area, maybe not always have to use a doc, uh, maybe do kind of a show rundown toss ideas back and forth and the the one example i keep saying see pop up is comic book buddies um, you can google something right inside the space and add stuff from the google results right in there um, have chat just to kind of start conversations in there it, it, it seems much more tight-knit um, and much more you're probably going to want to know the people that you're you're in this group with 
Um, or maybe you can kind of start at grassroots. I don't know. But it seems like a pretty cool concept for something like what we're doing. I could see using it potentially with people that I talk to a lot about home renovation. I'm actually, the cement is being dug up out of my basement by me. Um, so I'm talking to a lot of people about, you know, how would you do this? How would you do that? I, I could see for, for tight knit groups, people, I could see this definitely being beneficial. This feels very much like a Slack slash Pinterest groups, Slack slash Facebook uh, groups slash Pinterest um, play mm -hmm. from, from the stuff I'm seeing here and from what you're describing here. Uh, to that point, I feel like, well, we already have a solution on Trello. Trello is another thing a little bit, too. Um, it feels like a weird mashup of all those things. Uh, again, not getting into it uh, uh, personally, uh, but uh, it, they have some ideas from it, you know, mm -hmm. they, they have some ideas to get around it. Well, and I think and I'm, I'm I, curious, I'm interested to see. So everyone needs, I think everyone needs to kind of come up with their own competitor to Slack. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe to your point, this is their answer. Um, I know Microsoft's working on some stuff built in with the Skype for business and Skype and uh, Yammer um, pieces. So maybe this is Google's play in that space. Cause I, I hear a lot, I hear more and more, a lot of people, their companies moving to a Google ecosystem. And I'm sure this is that this component is something that people are going to be looking for, especially because now Slack has commercials. So it's definitely on the hearts and minds of a lot of enterprise uh, grade customers. Right. And everyone wants a piece of that. Yep. And you, so, when you think about it, it'll be interesting to see the differentiators, right? Cause I know the big banks, we can't use, we can't use Slack. So. Right. Uh, security is the biggest issue, yeah. right? And same with, same with healthcare, mm -hmm. same with healthcare. Um, although there are uh, what well, we, we talked with, um, uh, Matt Keener, Dr. Matt Keener, uh, Blackboard, Blackbird health there in Pittsburgh, where they're trying to take, you know, trying to bundle those those ideas and those technologies together, like Slack, uh, to you know at least bring the office together and, and more efficient. Uh, so so and again, banks. I think you have a little more security. Uh, I have a feeling bank security is a little higher than HIPAA. Uh, so well, we have to we have to uh, we have to apply to or we have to fall under a lot of the same same laws. So it's pretty much it's a lot of the same with some additional pieces. Okay. Right. Um, but it'll be interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm iffy because again, I look at this and I'm like, I feel like this is something that we're already doing in several other places, and I don't want to try to dive some people in in case it doesn't work. You know, um, I might get in there, and poke it, and poke at it. Maybe, maybe chill. If you want to do a group with me, we can kind of play with it a little bit and see, see what the good, the, 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 you know, the points where it makes sense. So, yeah. Um, hey, since we were talking about lifting everything earlier, uh, well, first of all, I, I don't know if you saw, I was on Twitter and Facebook, um, there was a weird car that went by us when we were over by the 31st Street Bridge, um, in Pittsburgh, and, uh, and, and, and we drove by, and, and Missy's like, is that a lawnmower on top of the car? And it looked like a big, giant component that, that covered the roof of the car, and there was something spinning which made me think it was maybe a LIDAR of some sort, right? And I kind of pulled, I was like, does anybody know what this could be? It's not a Google Street car. I know it's not a Google Street car. I know what they look like, um, you know, and, and just kind of putting that out there. I, I, and I know who what the players are in town. And, and somebody said, yeah, probably an Uber thing, probably something else. Because, you know, if you guys haven't heard, Uber actually has kind of moved into Pittsburgh to work with uh, Carnegie Mellon to work on automatic, automatic uh, automated cars. Automated drivers. Um, so, related to that, um, Google's Waze, according to this article, is um, adding carpooling in Uber's uh, San Francisco backyard. Uh, so, so again, kind of that play on not so much directly the Uber and Lyft thing, but more kind of just organizing carpooling, which you know, in a city like San Francisco, which has so many problems so many problems as far as transportation and people and flux of people and getting around. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, select employees of some, some big local companies can hitch a ride with the apps pilot program. So they're actually like, you know, 
hitch a ride to big company A with this. And that's in Waze. Waze seems like it's their playground to test things out. I mean, play, I mean, they kind of seemed like that before, you know. But um, it's kind of a curious play on this. What do you think, Joel? It's it is it is interesting. I'm inter- I think Google keeps putting different spins on a lot of their different product categories, and I'm sure they're going to put their stamp on Waze because Waze was an it was an acquisition. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they can adapt it for the carpooling thing. The question is, is how are they going to monetize it? Obviously, Uber and Lyft have have a way to monetize that that product offering. They're obviously it's a big win for people that want to drive cars and drive people around. And it's a, a big win for people that need to get from point A to point B. I didn't read this article personally, but does it say anything or is there going to be some kind of advertising? Or are they going to use demographic information? It, it, it's interesting because Google always, the one thing that's important to, to, to remember about Google is they're a marketing and advertising company that does search. They're never going to run out of money and they're never going to run out of people that search. So they're never going to run out of people to market to. Um, how are they going to take this and make money off of it? Or is it a- actually, actually it, basically it's an Uber type. Oh, so it isn't just a ride share you from hitch, a ride. You, you hitch rides with drivers using Waze and pay the drivers through the app. So basically, okay. I can say, "Hey, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, let's say Backblaze is a participating co- company because I know they're in the mostly San Francisco area. Um, I, I'm employee, you know, 700 from Backblaze, and I'm going this way, and I'm looking for other Backboys employees because they're big enough. You don't know everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you pay me for the ride to to hitch a ride into work, you know, instead of taking your car or taking tra- public transportation. Um, so and yeah, then, and then, I, so then Google takes a cut. Hmm. This is what it um, says. I'm, I'm reading through the article. Google's taking a 15 percent cut in Israel, but they're not taking. It yet in San Francisco. Right, right. Well, wait, wait. Until they have, you know, they know it works, you mm-hmm. know, because I, I got to, I can imagine this kind of thing works differently in Israel than it does in San Francisco for culturally and, and, you know, uh, uh, logistics of the city, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's a perfect place because it's, it's the kind of, just like everything, it's like everything pilots out there, right? Um, like I was saying, somebody once told somebody, one of the Lyft drivers about that car that I saw out there. I was like, oh, yeah, it's weird to see something that's like weird and futuristic like that in Pittsburgh because we thought you get all that cool stuff out here, especially San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to, I like, I've, I've often started, I, I'm starting to refer to San Francisco as the broken city of tomorrow because uh, they get all that cool stuff and they're going to have a, crazy balloon that's going to pop here very soon and be in a lot of trouble but um well, it'll be interesting to see what happens in pittsburgh from that from that standpoint i mean you you look at you got facebook and oculus coming in you got you got uber you got apple microsoft seems and, to be expanding and we have super Google. and we have super gentrified neighborhoods like east liberty that mm-hmm. are they're you know, like feeling that um there's some f google graffiti over in Lawrenceville over on Butler Street if you haven't noticed uh, and I was kind of curious and I still haven't figured out what entirely that's about like was there like is there a specific reason is it like the is it like the protest they have against the Google buses in San Francisco where they're like picketing Kevin Rose's home and stuff like that you know are we are we getting something like that now obviously Pittsburgh is as a whole tremendously more affordable than than a San Francisco uh, or basically anything out here um that i understand uh so so but but that bubble's coming in isn't it right and and that talent and and that level you know is, is going to keep that up where you're going to have like an east liberty that's what you know at least we got the south hills right <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know um it, you know, we're we're the commuters when it comes to those kinds of things. If we're in that, that kind of thing, oh, you are a commuter. You live you live like two boroughs or, what, or actually the borough outside city limits, and you you roll into downtown and do your thing, um, in in a big big company down there. Uh, so and it's just I don't know, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Oh, well, and we're seeing the change. We're mid change right now. We're like mid strokes in this right now in Pittsburgh. So well. You know what I'm excited about? Um, Nintendo. 
Nintendo will start producing its own movies over the next few years. And I know whenever whenever anybody hears that, they they throw back to the Super Mario Bros. movie, just like this article. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, uh, they got to keep trying to get it good. You know, um, I feel like I feel like they've learned from that mistake a little bit, and and um, and and I feel like that's also kept them from experimenting more over the years. Uh, probably also because they're a Japanese company, but they do well with Pokemon. So they got cartoons down. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully that means we get our Zelda movie that we've been wanting forever. I, I'd like to see a Link movie. I think it would be an interesting, like a Legend mm-hmm. of Zelda movie would be kind of cool. A Metroid movie. Could you imagine like a big sci-fi thriller, like Metroid kind of thing? That'd be cool. I think, I, especially today, like you can do that with the special effects. I want one that just basically looks like Metroid Prime. Captain you know? Captain N, reboot, live action. <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. You know, uh, even as a series or something like that. Like, I actually I, liked a, watching that as a kid. Oh, it's yeah. I read the comic books and everything. It was great. Uh, you know, I don't know about live action Mario Brothers again, but you know, I think you could do better with it. But I don't know that that's worthwhile uh but uh but no i i'm hoping you know video game movies have a really interesting history uh and even like the assassin's new assassin's creed movie like it's like yeah you almost got it you know <laughs> as far as that trailer goes but again it's just a trailer uh you don't know what the vibe's going to be when you actually watch the thing so hey i'm coming around on angry birds and and not just because i happened to get a response when i was kind of throwing it down you know, I was kind of putting it down on Twitter and the director of the movie started responding to me. Um, but uh, like I saw a new trailer for them and I was just like, wow, that's actually seems like an entertaining movie. Like it doesn't seem like every other CG movie, like the first few trailers made it look like. So I still think the character designs are a little weird. Um, I feel like I feel like they're I'm going on, on a whole other thing, but I feel like the Angry Bird redesigns are kind of like the big hairy monster that Bugs Bunny used to deal with every once in a while with the tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's that's my interpretation. Like put a beak on that, and that's that's the Angry Birds. Anyways, let's talk about technology. <laughs> uh, one more story, story chilla, and we'll get out of here. Um, do you want to do your Remix OS for Android or HD Home Run? And DVR. Uh, tell me, you know, let's just let's just pull them both together. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'll, I'll start with the HD Home Run. Um, so okay. I've used, uh, and I think we've talked about them on the show, um, Elgato type equipment where it's kind of like a USB thumbstick that lets you hook in a, a coax cable and you can use digital antenna or you can use... Um, a cable box to run through it. Um, you can also, they have other boxes where you can actually share that out over Wi-Fi and they have apps for uh, mobile devices. Um, this is actually kind of partnering up the HD Home Run Record for Android TV. Um, let's you kind of create a, an out-of-the-box DVR, actually probably more of a, a home-built uh, DVR through their HD Home Run and uh, an Android TV. The HD Home Run will take and record whatever it can get to um, to network storage, and then the Android TV um, can then play that back with no problem. The cool thing is, is if you actually have an NVIDIA Shield Pro, which runs Android TV, it has 500 gig of built-in storage on it, um, so oh, you can start recording right right there if you have that HD home run device. Um, Side note, this is the most unexciting product video I think I've seen in a long time. <laughs> and I'm it's, really tired of looking at this guy. But the, the, the thing that I really like about the product is it creates kind of a homebrew DVR that anyone can use and is mm-hmm. relatively low cost with no monthly charge. Hmm. So I, I think that's kind of what's key key to this um <laughs> um they're calling out they're calling out in the chat room that the home run logo looks like a green porn hub logo thank you i thought i couldn't place it either uh, so I'll, I'll be interested too to is, see what happens with with um some of the acquisitions i think tivo um and rovi there was an acquisition um 
Roe v. acquired TiVo. I don't think TiVo is going anywhere, but I've also heard that the FCC is trying to deregulate cable boxes in the home and open up a lot of competition. So hopefully we see more in this arena and it continues to, to kind of source for, from anywhere from free to the hundreds of dollars a month to pay for service. Are you talking about anything more than the cable cards that they've been doing? Well, there's, so, you, so if you're from like my TiVo takes a cable card, mm-hmm. what, what the, I thought what the FCC wants to do is they want to deregulate and decouple the DVR from the service. So say, Oh, of oh, the DVRs themselves. Okay. Yeah. I see. So anyone, you could go buy any cable box from any manufacturer and yet much like a cable card, you could throw a cable card in the back, but it doesn't seem like the cable companies are really on board with that. And as a cable card user, you you gain some and you lose some. And I think the FCC wants to level that paying, playing field and also allow for a lot more competition. Hmm. Well, on the other side of Android, um, how about an Android PC? Um, this is the one that uh, you mentioned here briefly. Uh, but uh, I'm always interested in this because we've seen like desktops that run Android and they're just a giant, basically a giant tablet, right? Uh, this is, you know, is, is trying to be an all one PC is the uh, Remix OS on the AOC Mars all in one PC. Uh, and it's really curious. So they actually took uh, Android and they kind of reformatted it a little bit, right? Uh, where it, 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 it's still Android. You can still run your standard Android stuff, but actually has a windowing system on top of Android. So like I, I was looking at this, I thought they were just running like an Android emulator in like Windows X, Windows 10. Uh, I almost said XP, uh, but, but you know, you have a file manager, you have all that kind of stuff. They've kind of added a lot of features to it uh, so they can do a full on PC kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> the interesting thing is uh, you can get the Play Store, but you have to sideload it as a user. <laughs> So, uh, mostly it's kind of all of what you would want out of something like this. And again, it's Android. And and if you're really kind of into something like that. Now, you're you're more of an Android user than I am, Chilla. What do you think about uh, this kind of concept? I think I think this is a great concept. I'm, I'll be surprised if Google doesn't take something like this and kind of build the same theory and converge or, or do something with Chrome OS. Because it does, it does are, remind me a little rumors? bit of Chrome OS. What, what's that? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. What's that? I said it does oh, remind oh, me of Chrome OS. I say, and even this this looks like Chrome OS to mm-hmm. me, um, but no, it's running on Android. It said, yeah, and that's been the rumors, and I think I think that's completely a possibility. But and and I think it goes back to you see Apple borrow pieces of Mac OS to to bring to iOS and and vice versa, right? The the entire launcher has been changed around in Mac OS, the launch pad to match the look and feel of iOS to give someone that easy flow between the two. I think this is the the next bridging that gap, because if you know how to use Android on a phone, Mm -hmm. it should be pretty seamless to the user on the PC or on a computer. Um, And I think it, 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 I look at windows 10 and I hate to say this, but when you look at windows 10 on the tablet form factor, don't, Don't take into account your standard laptop or desktop. I'm talking about your touch panel with removable keyboard that's meant to kind of use that convertible form factor. Windows 10 can get confusing if you let it kind of auto bounce back and forth from tablet mode to laptop mode. And this, this type of thing is what's going to really bring people to alternative platforms um, as they get con- confused on on the Windows platform. Especially when you look at what, what it would cost to do something like this versus what it costs right. for a Wintel box. Right, right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. As I said, somebody had to put a lot of R&D in to make this thing work. So they... And it's a company I've never heard of before. So I, I, I don't know what you would get out of it, but um, I'm sure it's some kind of Chinese company or something. Well, Chilla, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's been your awesome cast. And of course, Chilla has all kinds of awesome things going on over at his blog. Chillatech.net and Chilla on the Twitter and John Chachilla on the Facebook.
go check it out. And he's been uh, doing articles, like stuff that he's talked about on the show. He's expounding on them, and, and we've, we've had the clip on and everything like that. Have you? Have you? Uh, I didn't. I didn't get to the, the thing from last week, and I actually actually started working with what was the hit hit TV hit film. So I actually downloaded all their projects. I downloaded the application. I was actually going to ask to borrow some of your time to do. I need a black a black background video of myself so I can superimpose all of the Iron Man HUD around me. So pretty cool project. I'm, as I finish, you that know, up, you know, we do have access to a green screen. I it, but they didn't and use a green screen. They used. I'll, I'll show it to you and we can talk about it offline. Okay, show me a thing. We'll talk about it because we are planning an open green screen session uh, next Saturday. Uh, if anybody wants wants to check that out, we're doing Sogatron Media. No, two Saturdays. Uh, I don't know what week it is. Um, um, on the 28th, I think it is. Uh, so if anybody's interested, uh, there's a Sogatron Media coffee happening then at Work Hard Pittsburgh. And um, I think uh, and this is kind of like open to anybody who wants to come out kind of quietly to to our crew and everything. But anybody that listens to us, if you guys want to come down, um, I think we're going to get down there about 10 a.m. And, and just let people uh, kind of... Uh, riff some ideas on the green screen. That's usually how, like a lot of those fun yik yak videos and stuff that we worked on, uh, kind of came about. And so if, if if that works out, you know, Chilla, show me that thing, and we'll we'll see what we can work out too. Cool. Um, also, PodCamp Pittsburgh has a lot going on. We just did evening with PodCamp this past week. Uh, we had Jim Cren from uh, Q ninety two or ninety three ninety two, right? Whatever that whatever it is in Pittsburgh um, on a, a podcast for himself, a friend. Professor Buzzkill that's been on this show, um, as well as uh, Brian Crawford, again, from River's Edge. And uh, Katie was on there, Dutters, and Buzzy from Epicast. And uh, we had a great discussion, about an hour and a half discussion. You can check that out over on the Facebook page. And I'm now dawning on me, I never posted it on the .com. Uh, but you can go to the Facebook page, and, and we have the video right there. It's on the YouTube. Uh, I think we did share it on our Awesome Cast group, too. Uh, also, if you are just catching this in time, we're actually having an intro to blogging that Amanda Narcissi of the uh, Bold Pittsburgh is going to be doing at the Carnegie Library of, Beach, Library of Beachview. Uh, so go check that out. And there's plenty of more going to be coming up. Um, in the works, I'm trying to get a panel together on social media and podcasts or social media and politics uh, coming up here. So uh, uh, keep an ear out for details on that. We're aiming for, uh, I think, the last day of July or no, June for that uh, for Work Hard Pittsburgh. So it's everything going on there. And of course, please follow me on Snapchat. Um, I, that's where I'm putting a lot of my stuff here from this trip out here, out west here. Uh, so you can kind of follow that. So I'm not flooding, you know, Twitter and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I might do something with that later. But I don't know what I'm going to do with so much vertical video uh, is the problem. <laughs> and of course, a lot of Baja cars here later in the week. It'll be all over my stuff as, as uh, I get out to the desert and attempt to avoid rattlesnakes as I go try to film stuff. What's, what's so. the what's the signal strength like out in the desert? Oh, we're gonna find out. <laughs> what I'm I'm hoping like that, that's the only reason I don't go with go with a cheaper provider is I I look at my itinerary and say yeah you're gonna be in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee uh yeah you're gonna be in the desert in California yeah you're going to Rochester New York because who knows um you should probably stick with AT and T you know it's not like Verizon's much better and like anybody else I can't even consider right mm -hmm. um. When I tweeted about my phone problems, I got I got a tweet from like Sprint in San Diego it says we can help you get a new phone. I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. I'm still paying this one off. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there was that. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Awesomecast, awesomecast.net. Subscribe to us if you have not already over on iTunes, Stitcher, Stitcher Speaker, Podcasts. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Google Music, uh, wherever podcasts are, on the YouTube if you want to see our smiling faces and then the images and the cameras that Chill is showing off, and uh, or, or over on Facebook. We're posting the videos there as well. And join the Awesome Cast Facebook group. Uh, thank you so much to everybody in the chat room. Join us live.sorgatronmedia.com over uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, every Tuesday night. Our friends like Alex Cars, uh, Heel Garza in here early for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Alex Oh, that's Alex Cars again. Wheels is the other name I was looking for. Juggalo John and everybody else that's popped in through the night. Tragar for a moment as well. Thank you everybody for supporting the show. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week from this awesome Airbnb.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.